Okay, so is Biden going to do some stuff on his way out? It's kind of a speculation. I mean, he's got nothing to lose. He's going to be out in, what, four months? And he can do some shit to try and change some stuff before he leaves, make some executive actions, and, you know, I don't know, maybe change the, the political landscape for, uh, for the next president. You know, whatever, whoever you think is going to win. I mean, I have my feelings about who's going to win and who's not going to win and how they're going to win and all that. But anyways, let's just get on to this. <laughs> I digress. So this is an NBC News uh, article, obviously dumpster fire, but let's see what they have to say. It said, Biden calls for Supreme Court reforms and constitutional limits on presidential immunity. Oh, I wonder why you're calling for constitutional limits now at the end of your term. That's weird. President Joe Biden on Monday called for an overhaul of the Supreme Court and a constitutional amendment limiting the power of his own office. Reforms that might not be implemented, but demonstrate his priorities in his final months in office. I served as a U.S. Senator for 36 years, 36 years, you mean 3,600 years, including as chairman and ranking member of the Judiciary, Judiciary Committee. I've overseen more Supreme Court nominations as Senator, Vice President, and President than anyone living today, Biden wrote. I also or I have great respect for institutions and separation of powers. What is happening now is not normal, and it undermines the public's confidence in the court's decisions, including those impacting personal freedoms. We now stand in a breach. Biden called for a constitutional amendment, saying former presidents don't have any immunity from federal criminal indictments, trials, convictions, or sentencing. That's kind of funny to me that he's calling for that, considering he might be in some hot water You know, once he's out of office, if he were to get rid of that. I share our founder's belief that the president's power is limited, not absolute. The president wrote, we are a nation of laws, not of kings or dictators. Unless he knows, you know, unless he knows he's got some kind of, you know, buffer against all that. The amendment uh, is in line with Biden's recent statements that no president is above the law. A refrain, a refrain he has repeated several times since the Supreme Court said some actions related to the duties of the president can't be prosecuted. The decision favors former President Donald Trump in criminal cases against him and could enable other former presidents to avoid certain criminal charges going forward. Biden also expressed support for Congress to uh, create term limits for Supreme Court justices, saying he favors 18-year terms, which he believes would prevent one president from having multi-generational influence on the judiciary. I kind of agree with that, but it's funny that he's, he's talking about that now, because if you see here, this is, this is the nine justices right now that are in they're in Supreme Court. So you got Clarence Thomas, who's the longest since 91. So he's been serving 33 years plus. Um, his term limit would have already ended in 2009. So he'd be immediate. Done. Then you've got John G. Roberts. Oh, and by the way, Clarence Thomas is probably one of the more, more conservative uh, justices. Uh, then you've got John G. Roberts, also another conservative. He would end now. So he'd be done. Samuel Alito also would be done this year. So that's three. <laughs> um what do you call it, uh, Republican-leaning or conservative-leaning justices that would be ousted right away. So you'd get three appointees. Bang. That would change. That would completely change the, the Supreme Court, obviously. Then you've got uh, Sotomayor, who is probably the most left-leaning of all of the, the justices. Um, she'd be out by 2027. Then Kagan, the year after, which is another left-leaning. Then you've got three right leaners, three conservatives here in uh, Kavanaugh, Barrett, and, and Gorsh. And then you've got the newly appointed uh, Jackson, who would, you know, who's got till 2040. So obviously that favors, you know, it favors the Democrats if that were to to take place now, right? They get rid of three, and then they've got a few years to for another two to be done. But if their plan is that they're going to win this next election with their appointed candidate at this point, not elect, not duly elected candidate, uh, they could get five in the next, in the next cycle. They could have bang five, five in there and they'd, it'd be a five to two at this point, sort of five to, or six to three at this point, which, you know, just swings it back their way. So anyways, uh, let me continue to read here. In addition to term limits, Biden called on C Congress to make Supreme Court uh, subject to the kind of enforceable ethics requirements imposed on other federal judges regarding regarding gifts, political activities, and financial dealings. Obviously, that's, that makes sense. 
Um, Biden is scheduled to deliver remarks Monday afternoon at the Lyndon B. Johnson Presidential Library in Austin, Texas. The president will lay out his proposals at a celebration of the 60th anniversary of the Civil Rights Act, signed by President Lyndon Johnson in 64. The event was rescheduled after the assassination attempt on Trump at a campaign rally in Pennsylvania on July 13th. Okay, so it looks like, and this, this keeps going on a little bit, but it would look like he's going to try and do some stuff to set up for the future Democrats, which, you know, is probably something that Trump should have done before he got out of office, but he didn't. Uh, in good faith, probably thought he was going to get back in, but he didn't. Uh, so what do you think? You think it's, uh, you know, you think they'll do anything? You think this is bluster? Or you think he's just going to kind of sleep his way to the end of his presidency?